that's crazy to run into you right, here. Right, right. Yeah, it's just not crazy, but good. Good to, see good to see you as well. So, what's been going on? Just a lot, you know. But we're doing, we're doing okay. You know, we don't care about that. What about you? How are you doing? Clothing line. Well, right, clothing line is doing really, really well, as a matter of fact, and the book is finished. It's called The Mama's Prayer. As a matter of fact, I have an autograph signing coming up this week. You should come by. I'll send you a copy. I'm, I'm not really getting out a lot these days. It's just kind of sticking close to home, but, you know, I really appreciate the offer, and, um, you know, if I don't see you again, good luck, and just thank you. But Beth, before you go, remember, you can do all things through Christ Jesus, and you're never alone. You always got people that's praying for you. Just hang in there. I can't do this anymore. Sentiments echo from a severely depressed lady, feeling the good things in life have been evading her lately. Disenfranchised by society, disowned by her family, all because she chose to keep in half a little biracial baby, she says, I'm just tired. Can't seem to catch a break. Do nothing right. I'm tired of my life. The failures and struggles and fights with the voices in my head that seem to get louder at night. When was the last time someone sincerely told me that they loved me or just a call to say that they needed me? This was the barrage of negativity and rotation in her head she replayed daily repeatedly. But now her mind's made up. Today's gonna be a last, then a thought dawns upon her. I can't do this here. Not now, at least not in front of little Tanya. These words came from Beth, the single parent of a daughter named Tanya, who would have ended it all much sooner if holding her daughter in her arms didn't bring so much joy and encourage her to press on a little longer. So as she gains her composure and as she's holding her now, she kisses her, reassuring her she's loved before setting her back down. But unfortunately, she's at that place now. You see, times before, that's all it would have took to settle the deal. But now the weight of the world and mountain pressure has the scales unbalanced, so what would have done it times before suddenly lost its appeal. Beth picks up the phone and calls the neighbor. Hi, Miss Purdy. Listen, I was wondering if you could do me a favor. You mind if Tanya stays over the night? I need a babysitter. You don't have to come and get her. I'll, I'll just pack her things up and send them on over with her. For real? Thank you so much. And that's that with no drama? Tanya, you staying at Miss Purdy's tonight? Baby, do mommy a favor. Go get your backpack ready. Make sure you grab your favorite DVD. Last place I saw it, I think it was up front in the living room next to the TV. Little Tanya says, Mommy, I don't see it. I need you. Come help me. Beth turned around quickly as she instantly began tearing, fighting to numb herself to the little soft, sweet voice she was hearing. She yells out in frustration and emotion. Well, look harder, Tanya. Baby, you're going to have to learn to do things for yourself as you grow. I'm not always going to be here for you to do these things, you know. Little Tanya looking on with hurt little feelings through sad eyes, and you can tell. Says, Mommy, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you angry at me and yell. I just really need you. Help me. Since it was more behind the outburst, she walks over, gives her mama a kiss and begins to hug her. Squeezes her tight, eyes full of little tears, soft, broken little voice telling her how much she loves her. Beth now holding Tanya, trying to hold back her own tears. And though Tanya's hugs in her arms brought back memories of deals once settled from previous years, but she's at that place now, so even this one's lost its appeal. She says, Baby, make sure, once you get over to Miss Purdy, to tell her to come over in the morning to check on mama before she brings you back. Maybe around 7.30. The door will be open. Okay, you got your backpack ready, baby? You got Finding Nemo? Come slide your coat on. Tanya was clueless to what Mommy was really thinking and what was really going on. Tanya walks out the door and as Beth watches out the window her crossing the street, she waves bye-bye, little baby, closes the curtain, locks the door, wiping the tears from her cheeks. She breaks down and grasps herself, gets up, goes to the kitchen, grabs an extension cord and holds it loose. She makes a noose, steps up on the kitchen table chair, attaching the cord from the ceiling, preparing to make use. Then has a moment, remember once telling her daughter, baby, don't ever quit. If you trip and fall, Mommy will always be there to support you. Now she's giving up, necking the noose, rocking on the chair back and forth, hoping it trips so it won't support her. As she's rocking, she's losing balance, but much to her surprise and horror, the unthinkable happened. She hears the little voice of her daughter. Now she's wishing this whole thing wasn't happening, that there was somebody there who could have caught her or at least grabbed and set the chair back up right to support her. Little Tanya sees you think you're playing some games, so she walks over and asks laughingly, Mommy, what you doing? Then standing right beside you, she picks up the chair, places it back under your legs to stop him and support him from moving. You see, Beth was being selfish about to take away a last breath that wasn't only her sauce of survival, but was intended for someone else. Little Tanya says again, Mommy, I need you. Can you help me now? Beth finally acknowledges what she's been hearing all along. Now, yes, taking her neck out of the noose, bracing herself as she takes her first steps back down. To Tanya, this was all just a game, but to Beth, divine intervention she couldn't ignore. God using her daughter to help remind her that she's needed and loved, and to get her grounded literally with her legs back on the floor. Then Beth says, baby, mommy needs you too. I know you need me. 
Now come over here, let's spend some time together and watch some TV. Tanya says, really? Grabbing a little doll, jumping on the couch, snuggle next to mom, about to watch her favorite Finding Nemo, unaware what really just happened, and that God just used her as a little angel to be a mama's hero. Thank you.